So welcome everybody. Thanks for coming. Um, Ms. Tina's going to teach us a lot today on our multi needles. Um, if you have any questions or anything like that, there's a chat box. Just feel free to um, comment your questions and then we'll have questions about every 15 minutes. Um, and yeah, um, Ms. Tina, do you have anything to add? No, I'm really excited to be doing this virtually. This is exciting. This is a first time with you guys. Yes. I'm sure everybody else is excited to be able to see you and um, watch the recording later too. Awesome. So um, I'm going to pass the mic to you. All righty. Okay. Everybody right. see Tina? Are we good? I think so. All right. So guys, today we're going to look at a lot of information about the melting needle machines from Brother. Um, I'll talk to you about some of the things the machines can do. We'll talk about some things that you might want to know about if you're thinking about starting a business or using your machines to generate an income for yourself. And we'll have a little trunk show. We'll do a little bit throughout and then some more at the end. So hopefully you guys are ready and we'll go ahead and get started. All right, so I don't know if you guys are familiar with the term side hustle, but you know, for a lot of us, it means something that we do on the side. We don't give up our day job, but it's something we do on the side that's fun. It's generally creative and it helps us generate some extra income. And my favorite part about it is in a side hustle, you get to be your own boss. You don't have to worry about if your boss is mean or nice or anything, because it's you. <laughs> All right, so. Let's get started with the, the multi-needle machines. Brother basically has three different machines in our uh, lineup. It's a PR lineup. On the left-hand side, you're gonna see the Persona. That is actually a single needle machine, but it's got that free arm um, body that, that lets you do hats and get into three-dimensional objects. And basically it has four thread spools so you can tie on your new colors really quickly and easily. In the middle, we have the PR680W, that's the six needle machine. It came out about a year ago. It's uh, really nice. It's got a, a really cool embroidery crosshair positioning laser feature, which I'll show you guys later on today. It's got some really cool and trendy designs on it. It's a really nice machine. And then of course on the right, we have the 10 needle of the PR1055X. It's our top of the line in the PR lineup. It offers a lot of things like a real-time positioning camera. It's got the My Design Center capability on it, so you can create your own designs on the machine. Um, you can have, again, up to 10 colors in your design without having to stop what you're doing and change the thread color. So it's basically, it's a top of the line. Uh, our customers use it who are using it for business, and we have lots of what we call extreme hobbyists, and that's a lot of you. Um, from Ruthie's, who basically you're always trying to figure out a new creative project, and this machine is a great companion for that. So just a little bit more information about the 1055. Um, it has tons of built-in designs. Many of them um, are compatible with uh, business needs like fire department, um, badges and sports things and all that kind of stuff. You've got lots of different fonts. We'll do a little text editing later. Um, so it's really easy to personalize things. And in this space, you know, a lot of the orders that we get are to put people's names or their sports team or something on it. So it's nice to be able to do uh, lettering and editing really quickly. Um, of course, you know, you've got the My Design Center, the 10 needles, which is really awesome. And this machine actually comes with a wide support table. You can see it on here, it's a little hard to see, but that provides weight support if you're ever embroidering on heavy items. Really a great machine. Again, it's got a really large embroidery area, uh, about eight, eight by 14 inches. So you can do really big projects like quilts or big jacket backs or blankets or pretty much anything you want. It's a, it's a wonderful machine. Um, it does come with a number of frames, the eight by 14, the five by seven, a four by four and a two by one and a half. And of course, we'll talk today about some of the optional accessories that are available for the machines. And the accessories are all designed to make it easy for you to accomplish your project goals. Now the 10 needle, for those of you who are quilters, has a function on it that we call quilt broidery. And this allows you to do your quilt borders 
Um, basically, you give the machine the dimensions of your quilt project, how tall it is, how wide it is, how wide your borders are, and it automatically resizes the designs and walks you through the placement so you have perfect results every time. You got five two color designs that you see here on the left and you've got 21 color design motifs and really everything from floral patterns to geometric patterns to all kinds of different things. I, I always find something that I think is a perfect companion for my quilts. Here you can see uh, one of the borders that's been done on a, on a, a smaller quilt. And again, really, really easy and quick to do. Now, for those of you who don't yet have one of the machines in the PR lineup, the thing that's really special about this machines is that free arm. And because it's got such a narrow profile, it's really easy for you to get in there and put embroidery on, you know, wine bags and the, le the leg of a pair of jeans, sleeves of shirts. And that, that capability without removing seams is really powerful um, on these machines. And of course, you've got it on all the machines in that PR lineup. Now, coming back to the 10 needle for a minute, right? You've got several different things that you can use for positioning. Um, we'll look at the high speed background scanning and the real time camera today. You've got the snowman stickers where you basically place a sticker on your item and the machine finds the sticker and then will rotate and move the design as needed. And what's cool about that, if you're like me, is I don't have to be a perfect hooper, right? I can hoop something crooked and still stitch it out straight. So that's an incredible technology. There's also a feature called the design connection. For example, if you're putting a border around a tablecloth or something else that you can use the camera to connect between hoopings. So really, really great features. Again, you know, for a lot of us getting things in the hoop and getting the design where you want it are two things that can be a little bit challenging sometimes and this machine has really been engineered to make those things pretty easy for us. The My Design Center, if you haven't used this before, um, it's got a number of shapes and decorative fills on board. You can scan in people's signatures or children's artwork and turn them into stitches right on the machine. So that's a really, really nice feature, especially if you're trying to make those kind of unique one of a kind gifts. And here's a couple of things that have been done in the design center. So the stockings, those were artwork for the little paws and the cat and the bone. And you can see the little set of shirts from a child's you know, drawing from school, which is really nice. And then towards the bottom on the right hand side, you can see those were basically coloring book designs that were scanned into the machine stitches were assigned and then we were ready to go. So really, really a nice feature with a design center. Of course, you know, can't say too much about the 10 needles and the auto threading. So literally for most of us, we'll thread our machine up the first time. It really doesn't take very long. I can thread all 10 of my needles from start to finish in about mm, five to 10 minutes. And then as you're using it, if you need to change a color, you just cut the thread, leave a long tail, tie the new thread color in, pull the thread, thread through the needle and never have to worry about threading it. So that's a really nice feature as well. And again, with that auto needle threading, you never have to be able to see the eye of the needle to put your thread through. Cause I don't know about you guys, but every year it gets a little bit harder for me to see the eye of the needle. So I appreciate having that machine do that for me. Of course, in addition to the auto needle threading, the machine supports a number of different thread palettes. So whether you're a Madeira thread person or a Floriani thread person or any of the other major brands, all those palettes are loaded in the machine. And as you bring a design in, if, you know, for example, the digitizer used a different brand of thread than you do, the machine will automatically match it to the next closest color in the palette that you normally use. So that's really nice too. And of course, then it stitches at up to a thousand stitches a minute. So that's pretty awesome too. That means you get through your um, projects really, really quickly. Um, editing, I talked a little bit about the text alignment. I'll show you that later on. The other thing that I really love is color sort. So let's say you put a design in the machine and you can see here, it's got the pink color a number of times. You can use the color sort feature so it does all the pinks together and then the blues. And you might be asking yourself, well, do I really care since it's a multi-needle and it has all the colors in? Um, what color sort does for you? Imagine that you're running a business and you have a big order and you're trying to get it done quickly. 
by color sorting your designs, it just will mean that they'll stitch out a little bit faster because the head of the machine won't need to move back and forth between the colors multiple times. Um, you can also group and ungroup elements of a design in the editing process. We'll see a little bit of that later. And then real new on this machine, you've got the, the um, no sew feature. So that's really fun. You can actually edit a design on the fly. And when you get to a particular color sequence, if you press the no sew button without going to software or a computer or anything else, it'll remove that part of the design from the stitch out. So that's a really fun feature as well. Of course, applique, many of us love to do applique. We'll talk about some of the features on the machine that make that easy. And then color shuffling is a nice thing as well. If you're like me, I'm not so good at picking my colors. Color shuffling will take a design and give me different palettes and it'll randomly select colors for me. And it's surprising sometimes the, the cool things that come from doing the color shuffling. So again, all these things are designed to make your stitching experience fun and easy and quick. Of course, you know, it is a new machine. There's a lot to learn, but the good news is there are tutorials, video tutorials right on the machine itself. So, you know, if you're trying to do something and you haven't done it for a while and you can't remember exactly how to do it, just fire up one of those onboard um, video tutorials and you'll figure it out in just a couple of minutes and then you're back to the races. So that's also a really nice feature. And I think there's 29 of the video tutorials on the 10 needle. So lots of great features. Now, next up, I want to talk a little bit about this, the PR680W. Like I said, that's the six needle machine that came out about a year ago. Um, it does not have a camera on board, but the way that it does positioning is with the crosshair embroidery drop light laser. And I'll actually show you that um, working later on today. It has an eight by 12 embroidery area. High speed acceleration just means the machine goes from zero to a thousand stitches per minute really, really quickly. So again, that speeds up your stitch out. It does have that um, free arm that allows you to get into those hard to reach areas with the machine. Now this one has a unique set of features on it. They call them productivity boosting and safety features. If any of you are interested in having a machine like at a craft fair or in a storefront, you can literally lock um, the operation of the machine, you can password protect it so you wouldn't have like a customer walk up to the machine and use it. Or in your home, if you have young children or grandchildren visiting you, you can actually lock the machine so they, they can't, you know, they're fascinated by pushing buttons, they can't accidentally start the machine. So that's a nice set of features on here as well. And I don't know about you guys, but I really, I really enjoy the um, phone apps that Brother has released to help us with our machines. So you've got a number of them that are compatible with the uh, multi-needle machines. My Stitch Monitor, if you haven't used it, um, allows you, it's basically like an enhanced baby monitor for your embroidery machine, right? You, you're doing a stitch out and then I can be upstairs, uh, you know, cleaning out a closet or cooking dinner. My husband will laugh at me when I say cooking dinner. And if a thread breaks or when my stitch out's done, it'll notify me on my phone. So I can be doing multiple things at the same time. Art Spirit came out last summer, and I'll show you that later on today, but that's a free app that Brother has. It's compatible with um, both iPhones and Android phones, and every week they release new content, so new free embroidery designs, free cut files for your scan and cut, and a little magazine that shows you projects made with those designs and all the instructions in case you want to do that yourself. So a really nice way to enhance your project. <laughs> Uh, your project inventory and, and try some new things. Of course, design database transfer. Um, that's a free app that allows you to send embroidery designs directly to your embroidery machine from your computer without having to put them on a USB. And that's, I don't know about you guys, but I must have a thousand USBs in my, in my sewing studio. So, you know, I know it's on one, but I certainly don't know exactly which one it's on. So I like the, the ease of sending it directly from my uh, computer. And then the Brother Support Center is a really nice app to have on your phone. You can access the manuals for your machine. You can watch the videos on how to do things on your machine right on your phone. You know, if you come to an event at Ruthie's Notions and they have a sale on accessories, you can look right in that app and see if it's compatible with your machine. So it's, a, it's also a really nice um, uh, app that you can have. Now, I, I've heard that many of you are, are either um, 
supporting a business with your embroidery machines or looking to get into that. So as we go through the day, I'll um, periodically intersperse some kind of commentary and some recommendations for your business. And the first one I want to cover is collaborations. And for those of you who are my age, you know, you remember this is called networking back in the 80s and 90s. But it's really as you're out interfacing with businesses in your community, kind of think about businesses that you could partner with to expand your customer base, right? So, you know, there's several things listed here, bridal shops, baby specialty boutiques, realtors are a, a really good one, you know, home decorators, if you know someone doing that, a dry cleaner, they do tons of monogramming work at a dry cleaner. So remember them for sure. But what I would tell you is, as you're out in the world, you know, living your life, whenever you're in a business where the people are wearing some sort of uniforms that has either the company name or their name embroidered on something, all of those businesses are potential customers for you, right? Somebody's doing that business for them today, and that could be you in the future. So think about having samples that you could drop off at their store, ask them, you know, if who's doing their embroidery business? Are they interested in new um, new services from you? But those are great ways for you, especially when you're just starting out to find those customers. Now, another one about a business that we should really spend a little bit of time on is the blanks. And so if you're not familiar with embroidery blanks, that's the item that you're putting the embroidery on. So it could be a cap or it could be a polo shirt, makeup bag, whatever it is that you're doing. And when you're thinking about doing embroidery as a business, I would strongly recommend you to have a, a curated collection. That's a really formal way of saying, decide the kinds of things that you enjoy putting embroidery on, find a vendor that makes you know high quality, whether it's makeup bags or backpacks or whatever it is you're doing. And then that's your set of items that you offer for sale, right? And so, why do you want to have your own blanks as opposed to letting your customer bring you their random jacket, right, and asking you to put embroidery on? Well, there's two reasons for that. The first is a big part of your profit margin actually comes from marking up your blank, right? Typically, let's say you you spend $3 buying it, you typically double that in the sales price, so you charge your customer $6 for that. And so by allowing the customer to provide the blank to you, you're doing the same amount of work and yet, you know, you're making significantly less money, right? So that's one reason not to do it. The other reason, and this is really important as well, is you don't know where the customer got that item. You've never stitched on it before. You know, you may not have, you may not guess the right stabilizer recipe for doing that project. All those things could create a stitching mishap, right? And then it's the customer's blank. They either want you to replace it or they have a bad impression of your embroidery business, right? And you can eliminate all that by having a curated set of blanks that you offer. You know, again, you have the same quality every time and it allows you a lot more control in developing your price list when you're doing things. So do remember, and you know, let's be honest, when you're first starting out, you might agree to stitch on something the customer brings to you, but over time you'll learn the benefit of having your own blanks that they, that they um, can order from you. All right, so let's start talking about some of the accessories that we have for the PR machines. And again, you know, the right accessory takes this, something from being difficult to being super easy, right? And so as we talk through these, um, I want you to understand that they're really about helping you be more productive, finish your projects faster, and making difficult to hoop things easy to hoop, right? So that's the goal of most of the accessories. So we're going to start today talking about how to do caps. And, bef and I, ha I have a couple of videos that I made to show you the whole process. So let's talk about caps before we look at that information. Why do you want to learn how to do caps? Well, baseball caps, uh, bucket caps, those kinds of things generally have the highest profit margin of pretty much anything that you're going to stitch, right? They're relatively quick to do. They're inexpensive to buy the cap blank, and they have a really high markup. And so it's really good for you guys to have the tools and the equipment that you need to do caps, do them well, and do them really quickly. So let's come in here and I'm gonna walk you through the whole process. We're gonna start with hooping the hat 
and putting the driver on the machine, okay? So let's get this over here. All right, let's see. All right, so this is the universal or the flat brim cap frame that you see here. And to basically get started, you're gonna take out the two little small screws at the top, and then the two big ones, you're gonna not take them out, but loosen them so that they're flat. And then you'll see here that the cap frame fits right over the free arm of the machine pretty easily. And then you'll orient it so those two large screws slip into those um, channels on the back. And then the, you'll set the top row on the pins like any other uh, frame that you're using. Now, what I like to do is I like to push back on the cap frame while I tighten the two screws on the bottom really quickly. And then once that's done, I'll place and tighten the two smaller screws here as well. And literally that's all that is required to get the cap frame on the machine. So it's really quick and easy to do. <clears throat> Sometimes I hear people say that they're a little afraid to do caps. And then the one thing to remember is this little spacer is in the toolbox that comes with your machine. Always remember to put that spacer on the machine. What it does is it fills that empty area because the front of the cap is curved, right? And that, that needle plate is flat and so it just fills it up. So this is the, the hoop for it. You see this one is a locking mechanism. And so, and that's the, the jig that holds it together, right? And there's a, that attachment comes for your, uh, your printer, sorry, for your machine stand and it just screws right on there. So to get started, we're gonna take it from the locked position. We're gonna move it to the unlocked position and that allows us to pull this part of the, the framing jig out, okay? Now, once that's done, we'll wanna go ahead and slide that back into the locked position because you'll need it locked to hoop the hat and then it basically just snaps right on here. And you'll see that you just line up the three little areas and then squeeze it together with your fingers, just like that. So now it's, we're ready for uh, the stabilizer and it basically just slides under those uh, little lips right here, just like that. And then you'll use your finger, it's got pins in it and you'll wanna poke holes in the stabilizer and that'll just keep it in position while we're going. All right, so now we're ready for the hat. So here's a hat, and by the way, this flat brim hat you can use for these flat brims or standard hats. If you do have an opening in the back of the hat, open that out. Do remove the cardboard. Some people try and use it as stabilizer. That's a joke, but it's really not, all right? And then take your fingers and open up that sweatband a little bit because you're not supposed to stitch through the sweatband on the hat. Now, you're gonna take your fingers and squeeze the hat just a little bit. You don't wanna pull apart this plastic piece. You wanna basically squeeze your hat together so it fits over it. And those teeth fit right into that seam where the hat meets the brim. Then you'll basically, I use my pinkies to guide those metal parts into those channels here. And then because it's locked, it'll ratchet, it'll make a clicking noise as you're pushing it down. And make sure you push evenly from both sides. If you only push from one side, you could rotate the hat as you're hooping it. And before it's all the way down, if you need to make any of those adjustments, you can do it as you saw me do here. And so that's really all that it takes to hoop the hat. That was pretty easy peasy. Um, you can take the uh, sweatband here and you can pull it under that pin and over those little square structures there to keep it out of your way if you need to. And then basically this, you're gonna smooth from the center down and use the little clips. There's a little structure under there that the clips go to. So then you'll again, start from the middle and smooth and put the clip on. So at this point, our hat is uh, hooped and we're ready to basically pop it off here. So you notice fingers there. And I put my thumbs on that screw and just pull my fingers back and it pops right off. So that's pretty easy, all right? So now I'm gonna go over to the machine and we're gonna walk through the next part of the process. So I've got a hat on the machine already and I just want you guys to see how easy it is to get it positioned perfectly here. So my design is actually saved on my machine. I'll pull it up here and it's just brother with a little cool background and I'll set the design. Now, if I wanted to do any editing, I could do it here. You see, I could change the size or rotate it, mirror it, those types of things. I'm actually good with this design. So we're just gonna go ahead and say edit end. Now, this is the screen where we're gonna position 
the design on how to appropriately. And this icon is the real-time positioning camera. It looks like a little mini-me picture of the machine. And also, before I do that, notice that as soon as I left edit end, the machine is so smart that it knew that I have the hoop effectively hooped upside down and it rotated the design automatically for me. So that's a really nice feature. It's, it, it, they really do think through how to make things easy for us and to avoid any mistakes. So again, real-time camera icon here. It lets me know the machine's going to move. That's not a problem. All right, so here you can see my design superimposed on my hat. I have the center needle position turned on, right? And I can see that I'm a little bit off of that seam. So I can actually use my move key here and just slide that over until that center is right on that center seam of the hat. Now, sometimes as you're working on a hat, you may have rotation or other things that you need to check, or maybe you want to see it a little bit bigger. So the icon here, the, the magnifying glass, if we press this one, we'll come in here and you'll see a few things. So here you see a bigger image. You can see my little center is right on that center seam. That's what I want. I typically come up here and check here too. And you see, I'm also right on the center seam. So I know I don't have any rotation. I got my hat hooped pretty well here. If I did, again, my rotation controls are right in here. And if I had more moving to do, I have my move keys here as well. All right, now typically when I get here, I do want to move my design. There, I don't think there's any room for me, but I would always recommend that you try and move it closer to the brim until you hear that knocking noise from the machine because people like their designs as close to the brim as possible, all right? Now, a couple other things that we might want to think about while we're in here. Let's say you have one of the caps that has the mesh panels on the side, right? In that case, a lot of times I'll come here and I'll check this to make sure that my design is completely on the hat itself and not on the mesh panels. And then I can come over here and press and then do the same thing on both sides, right? So lots, it's very easy at this point to, to get your design exactly where you want it. When you're done here, you'll just come out and press the OK, OK? Now, just so you know, for those of you who have maybe haven't done this, if you're using the real-time camera to position with the move keys here, and you didn't come into the magnifying glass, you cannot press the embroidery button and, until the real-time camera icon has been turned off. So if yours still is highlighted with blue and you notice you can't press the embroidery button, don't panic. Just go back here and press the real-time camera icon a second time. It'll turn it off and that allows the machine to move, all right? So then all we have to do to stitch out our hat is come here to the embroidery screen. Now, while we're here, I just wanna show you um, a a little bit about color management, all right? So I have the, my machine set up for manual color sequence, meaning I do lots of different projects. I'm constantly using different colors. So I don't necessarily anchor different colors to different needle bars. Um, I adjust that on the fly. And so for example, if I were gonna stitch this hat out, I actually have my red thread on spool four and I have my black on spool seven, right? And so all I would have to do is use my magic wand here. And then I told you red's on four, so I'll change that. And black's on seven. So I'll just select each one of those, tell it which needle bar I actually have that color on, and you'll see it's updated here, and then I'd be ready to stitch. Now, the other thing that's on here that's really nice um, with hats, they do recommend that you slow your machines down so 600 stitches per minute, you don't even have to remember to do that. The machine will automatically slow itself down to 600 stitches per minute. So you can't even forget to do that. So really, really quick and easy to do um, to set up a hat and stitch it out here. Now I've got one other quick video and that's basically removing the hat from the machine and then removing the hat from the hoop. So we'll just um, slide over here and grab that one. I have like three mouses, so it's it's always fun to try and figure out which mouse I need here. So let's see. All right. So here our hat's been stitched. Again, just take your um, thumbs here and just uh, pop it right off the machine. So thumbs here and then pull it back towards you. Remember to turn the hat so that the brim doesn't hit the needle bars, all right? So 
So here's our embroidered hat. Now you don't have to remove the hoop from it back on the hooping jig, but I think it's actually easier. So basically what I do is I come back to the hooping jig. I snap it right back on just like I had it here. All right, I turn it back to the unlock position. I remove the two clips and that allows me to lift up the hat and the plastic piece. I'll just squeeze the hat together again and then remove that. And that's all that you need to do to do a hat. So pretty quick and pretty easy. Um, Sarah, any have any questions come from the group as we've been going through that process? Um, just one, would one, would that fit the enterprise? The enterprise. So, so what, um, what brother model is that? One before the 1050. Before the, so the PR 1000E would be the brother equivalent, I think. Um, they basically made the flat brim hat frame backwards compatible. I know all the way to the PR 1000E and the 10 needle sequence, um, but you will have to go onto the, the support center for your machine. There is a machine update that allows you to use this cap frame with it. So as long as you've processed the update, you should be fine. I think it is the 1000E. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna switch. I've got several hats that are stitched out here, um, Sarah. So I'm gonna switch and we're gonna look at some hats here real quick. Whoops, let me get this out of here. All right, look at this, a whole bunch of hats. So here's the one that I did this morning on the video. You can see it's all done here. And again, when it's done stitching on the inside, you can just remove the excess stabilizer and then you're, you're good to go here. Some of the designs, for example, this is really cute for you guys down in Florida, the sunglasses that's actually um, on the machine itself. It's a really cute design. Um, here's an example of one of the designs that's on the 10 needle that's kind of already set up for a business, right? Um, it's a, a golf club. We live in a golf community called Fairfield Glade. So literally all I had to do was add the text for the community we live in and I'm ready to go here. Um, so that was kind of fun and easy. Here's a couple that are using designs on the PR680W. You've got the really cute little sea turtle and you've got the lotus flower here. So really fun. And I'm going to walk you through a little bit more details on the two hat frames in a second. But I want you to look at this one. This one is using a different hat frame. We'll talk about it in a second called the wide brim. And it actually does ear to ear embroidery. So, and that's only available for the 10 needle machine. So if you have a need to do these really wide designs, then the wide cap frame would be the, a great solution for you. All right, so let's go back and look at some of these uh, frames in just a wee bit more detail here. All right, so we did this. So details on the individual cap frames. My mouse is not, not being nice to me right now. All right, so here's the universal or the flat brim cap frame. That's the one I just demoed for you. The product number is PRCF5. Again, it's brand new. Um, it's our, in my opinion, and I think Brothers as well, it's our easiest to use. It's a little bit smaller than its, than its predecessors. It does have that perfect embroidery field for the front of cap, so five inches wide and about 2.4 inches tall. Um, it comes with a cap frame and the brim holder. It, it was designed for the flat brim caps, which were real popular probably starting a couple of years ago, but you can use it on standard caps. I've used it on bucket hats. It works on most cap styles, so it's nice to have. And the fact that it's small, as you can see in the picture, it's easy to store. It doesn't take up a whole lot of room. So that's a nice feature on it as well. And again, if you need those wider designs, then that's the wide cap frame. And it's PRPCF1 is the product number. Again, it's gonna do that whole ear to ear. So that embroidery field for this one is 14 inches wide by two and three eighths inches um, tall. And again, it's only compatible with a 10 needle machines. All right, so you got lots of great options here. All right, so I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit next about the magnetic sash frame, and then I'm actually gonna take a minute, and Sarah, I'll let you do questions while I actually install it on the machine. But this is a wonderful uh, magnetic frame. It's got a 14 by seven inch embroidery area. It's got eight strong magnets. There is that little tool to lift the magnets if you ever need help with that. 
Um, I can actually do it with my hands. I don't ever use the tool, but it's nice to have the tools if you need them. And it really holds your fabric really securely. So talk about quilt sandwiches, right? It keeps everything together. While you're doing quilting, there's no movement of fabric. It's great for like heavy duty car heart jackets, which I'm sure y'all don't do too much of down in Florida. But anything that's kind of heavy, those magnets are really strong and they hold really well. So Sarah, do you want to take some questions and I'm just going to be changing out of frame real quick. Yeah. So I love that magnetic sash frame, even like lightweight stuff, like uh, the two layered rain jackets, those, the magnets are so strong that they hold those two layers in place. So I don't have to worry about it stitching, mis mix matched. And then um, it doesn't look good when you put it on it. So I love that hoop. Um, do we have any questions? You must have all the experts on today. They already know all this good stuff. <laughs> I hope don't when I put this one screw on. Oh, here it goes. All right. All right, I got the cap frame off. Now I'm gonna put the um Quilt sashing frame on the machine. Already. We don't have any questions yet. All right, everything's good so far. All right, so when you guys are at home and you have this particular frame on your machine, it is rec you, you're supposed to have that wide extension table on the machine to support the weight. Um, it is not designed to be used without that. And some people, you know, have tried the tubular frame table. And again, they don't recommend that. They really recommend that you have that wide extension table on the machine when you're using this frame. So remember that. I have so many cameras in here, I can't really walk, so. <laughs> I love your sewing studio. Thank you, That's, I appreciate that. You should see I have like 47 machines stacked up on the other side of the room though. <laughs> you know how it goes. Yeah. All right, one more screw to put in and then we've done the presto change out. All right. Has everybody used this hoop yet or have you at least heard about it? They're quiet today, huh? All right, so I've got the frame on. Again, I've got that seven by 14 inch area. And what I wanna do is I have a little quilt sandwich on the frame itself. I'm gonna show you a couple of positioning things that we're gonna do here, okay? So the first example would be, I have a quilt and I have an embroidery design that I wanna put in it or on it, I guess is the right way to say that, um, but I, you know, I don't want to have to be a perfect hooper to have that happen, okay? So I've got uh, some designs that were made for my little quilt here. So I'm going to pull up the design. Let's say I got this wherever online. I got it from OESD, um, and I want to use it on my quilt. So I'll pull up my design and set it. Now, to position it, I've got some cool options in here. So we talked about the high-speed background scanning. So on this page, the icon that looks like a little piece of fabric with a camera in front of it, if I click here, it's letting me know that the frame is moving. And it's actually taking a picture of all the fabric that I have in my hoop right now. So you can see it's scanning here. And it just takes a few seconds. Now, again, I told you, you should have your wide extension table on. I, I couldn't fit it with the cameras. So do, do as I say, not as I do in this example. All right. So now you can see my quilt on the screen and you can see my design superimposed on top of it. And so I didn't have to really care about how I hooped it. And I'm going to use the move keys here and just really, really quickly move it into position, right? So I can slide it up and down and however I need to do that whoops, until it's perfectly matched up to my quilt. All right, here we go. 
All right, so really, really quick and easy to do. It's not, it's a really nice feature to have. Now, as I'm looking at this, you guys are probably seeing it too. It looks like my design actually could be um, enlarged a little bit for my option here. And the nice thing is my size option is right here. So I can go to my size key. Now, if you haven't used these, there's two different resizing capabilities on the machine. Just really quickly, the first one, the default, is called simple resizing. So you can go up to 20% uh, bigger than the original design and you can reduce the size by 10%. So if you just need a little, a tiny little adjustment, then this is a good one for you. If you need to make uh, bigger changes in the size, it's the second one here, it's called resize with stitch recalculation. And what it's gonna allow you to do is take the design up to twice its original size and you can reduce it in size down to 60% of its original. So if you have bigger size changes to make, you'd use resize with stitch recalculation. I just have a little bit of an adjustment. I'm gonna make this guy a little bit wider, as you can see here. And then I can also check with the move key right here on that screen. So again, the cameras on these machines make these potentially hard to do things like getting your design perfectly placed pretty easy to do, all right? And really quick and easy as well. All right. So let's look at something else here. Let's go back and let's say that instead of using a design that I may have purchased, and by the way, if you've ever scanned like this and you're trying to get rid of the image, you can come into settings with the icon here and then just basically move over to the page where it has background image display. It's on page four, just hit delete. Right, and when you have okay and come out of here again, you'll see that my image has disappeared. So don't ever be frustrated that you scan something and now you have to look at it for the rest of your life. But let's say I wanna make my own custom quilt pattern for the same quilt. Let's go into the My Design Center for a second. So here, what I'm gonna do, you'll see I have three different scanning options here at the top of my screen. Um, this one with the fabric, I am gonna pick the image scan and that's gonna take a detailed picture of the fabric in my hoop. I'll show you an example a little bit later with a line design. So imagine a coloring book, right? All the black lines on a white background, that would be line design. Illustration at the bottom, that's more like, I think of it as a comic book picture where I'm going to put a fill stitch in for those solid colored areas. And so if I were after that, I would use illustration design, but we're gonna go ahead and use image scan here. And I'll press scan. And again, it's just letting me know it's taking a picture of what's in my hoop. And it's really, really quick. <clears throat> and I don't know about you guys, but I've done up to a queen size quilt on the 10 needle before um, with this hoop and it's, it's worked really, really well. I really like this hoop quite a bit. All right, so now, you can see that I have the picture of the fabric that's in my hoop. Now it's really pale and a little hard to see. So this is my darkness scale here. I'll just pop this over and darken that image up just a little bit, just like that, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I wanna use some of those really cute uh, custom fills that I have on the machine. I, I could draw these little squares. I don't really want to. So I'm gonna come in here to the shapes and I'm gonna pick the square. And then I'm gonna, you can see it here red. I'm gonna resize it. It's too big for one of those little squares. So let's just take it down. Just gonna shrinky dink it down until I get it close to the right size. And I'm gonna put a different fill in each one of those four squares just for fun. All right, let's see. So it's highlighted, so now I'm gonna move it in and check. Hey, that's pretty good. I can't really complain about that. All right. And again, if I have small moves that are hard to do with my finger or the stylus, I can always use the move keys here. So that's pretty good to me. I'm gonna come out of here. I'm going to assign a stitch to the square. So these are my line properties. I'll come in here. I'm gonna make it a run stitch. I'll make it blue. And then I'll take the bucket and I'll touch it and that'll update it. Now, rather than doing that several more times, I wanna make three more copies. So I'm gonna come in here to my select tool, grab my magic wand, touch the square so it's highlighted. With it highlighted, 
I'm going to duplicate it. So now I have a second one. Oops, do that a second time here. All right. Maybe a third time, you never know. All right. So now we're going to move it over so it's in that next area here. Dun, dun, dun. All right, that looks pretty good. With that done, I'll make another copy and then we'll slide that down here. All right, and then we'll make the last copy and slide that guy over here. Okay, that's, that's roughly what I want. All right, and then basically to put fills in that, I simply go into the fill categories down here. I'll choose settings. This will be a solid fill. This is a stipple. My decorative fills on the machine are here. And if I didn't want anything, I would hit the no so. So we're going to go into decorative fills. I don't know. Let's do the first one here. We'll make it green. I'll put on my flood fill or the bucket, and then I'll touch inside of a square. And now let's put that in there and come back in here. Maybe we'll pick another one. This guy here. Pick another color red. And again, touch in here. And basically, I would rinse and repeat that process through all of them. If there were any changes I wanted to make to my fills on the next page, this is where I can come in and change things. So, for example, on the leaf fill here, if I wanted the pattern to be smaller because it's a small space and so I could get more detail, I can change the size here and update it. Let's see. Let's make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see better. All right. Um, I could. If I want to change the angle, that's this one. If I wanted a run stitch border, I could add it here. If I want to distort it, I could, that's called random shift, but it just kind of stretches it out and makes it a little stranger. We'll hit OK. And then this, this last one here is really fun. Up until this machine, our only choice for the fills was a triple stitch, which is sometimes a little heavy for a quilt. So we can lighten that up by changing it to the single thickness here. Okay. Right, so then we've adjusted that fill. So now we'll just tab over and we'll grab the flowers and we could do those same changes there as well. So whatever changes you wanna have happen there. And then once you're done and you're happy with it, all you have to do is hit the set button and now you have your designs and they're ready to stitch. So my design center is really easy, right? It's just uh, figure out what you wanna, what your shape is or what you wanna fill, put up your fill, touch the flood fill bucket and then touch inside of the shape and now we're ready to stitch. So really, really fun and easy to do. All right. So while we're here and I have a decent sized frame on, um, let's look at a couple other things that we could uh, do uh, on the machine itself. So again, for those of you who are thinking about a business or have lots of gifts to make for people in the family, um, one of the things I really appreciate is how easy it is to add things to a design. So, for example, maybe I have a little boy and I need to make a onesie or a diaper bag or something else for. I have a cute little design here. That's great. But I want to add a name or a cute little saying around it. So it's super easy on here. I can go add. And again, I've got my fonts. I've got big decorative ones, but these are the ones that I use to put names and that kind of thing on. So you can see we've got lots of options. You've got block ones, you've got script fonts. And then these down here that have the five letters instead of the three, those are what are called micro fonts. They're digitized to be done teeny tiny, like think quarter inch-ish kind of size. So if you're ever looking for a teeny tiny one, it's one of these with the five letters. But you know, lots of things to work with. And by the way, if you need some Japanese fonts, we have those as well, but I can't tell you what you're spelling with them. All right, so we can come in here. This one's kind of cute. It looks kind of like a child's writing. So I might want to do, let's put a name. Let's do Thomas. You can see already, it's right now it's on a large size and that looks like it's going to be really big. So I'm going to highlight all the letters because when I do a size change later, I want it to apply to all the letters, okay? And we'll just finish writing out Thomas. Now I have to spell. This is another good one for me. All right, so there's Thomas. It definitely is too big, so let's try him in medium size. That actually looks pretty good. 
but I want him circle text up above the bear, right? That sounds like it would be hard. And historically, you had to go into software to do something like that. But we're just going to come here and press the array button. And you've got all these different things, top of circle, bottom of circle, up, you know, kind of like ladders, really tight circles. So you want the letters inside. But this is the one I want right here. And then as I'm looking at it, if I want that circle to be tighter, I can tighten up or basically tighten the arc with this button or I can flatten it out over there, but that looks pretty good to me. So I'll say, okay, right? Now, another thing that's in here, let's say I get to here and I'm like, oh, I wish I would have picked a different font, right? If you don't want to type it again, what's nice is you can go to this button right here and you can say, well, what would it have looked like in this font? And it automatically will adjust it for you between the fonts. So you really just have to type it out once and then pick the font that you want to use, right? And you can decide which one you think is the best. I kind of like my original one still. So we'll go here. All right. And then I'll set. And then, of course, I want him up here above the bear. So I'll just use my move keys and slide him up so he looks nice there. All right. Now, if I wanted to put his last name underneath the little bear, again, super easy. Add. Go back to fonts. I'll probably pick the same one if I can remember which one I picked here. And let's say his last name is Smith. We'll just do Smith. All right, and again, I'm going to change the size that's too big, so we'll go to medium. And again, small is really super, super, oops, small would be really, really teeny tiny, so medium is a good one here. Array again, and this time I want the bottom of the circle, so I'll choose here. All right, that looks good. Oh, by the way, this one, actually, the letters look like they're a little bit further apart. You also have the option here for spacing. So here I can make move the letters so they're closer together, or I can push them further apart. However you want to do that here is on this one. And then OK when you're done. Again, when I'm ready to add it to the design, I'll press set. Same kind of thing as last time. I'll just use the move keys here to add them down here. So really, really easy to do. If you can't see, we'll just magnify them up a little bit. But you can see it's it's really, really easy to add your text and to path it directly here on the machine. Now, another thing that's fun to do on the machine is, you know, how many of you like to add some sort of quilting fill around a design? I know I like to do that. And again, it's really easy to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the, the words and the design. So I'm going to select everything here. Okay, so it's grouped together. That's all I had to do. And now I'm going to add quilting. So I'm going to come in here to the icon that looks like a stipple stitch. And what you see is it's putting the stipple all around all three of those design elements, but not over top of any of it and also not underneath any of it. So that's nice. All I would have to do here is select the hoop size that I'm using. I'm just going to leave it on the one that I currently have on the machine. Now, a couple of things. Distance here, if I want a little bit more buffer of space between the design and the quilting stitch, I'll increase that distance here. Let's say I'm going to pop it out. About like here and it just it gives me a little bit more breathing room around my design it doesn't feel quite as crowded with the quilting and if I want to loosen up this and the default is a stipple if I want to loosen that up that's pretty tight for a quilt I just come in here and change the spacing to a bigger number all right and it'll automatically calculate that and you can see it'll loosen it right up so it's really easy to go from micro stipple to something that's really nice and loose and open okay now what I could also do in here is I could change it from a stipple to an echo by choosing this icon. Same kind of thing. Isn't that cute how you get the echoes all the way around that? Super quick and super easy to do. So don't ever worry about adding quilting to a design. It's really quick and easy and straightforward here in the machine. All right. Now, another popular commercial application for these machines is making patches. And I don't know how many of you are making patches but it's really easy to do on these machines. So let's come in and let's grab uh, one of the designs here. Let's say I'm doing a basketball team and they want basketball patches, right? So here's my initial patch or my initial design. I'll go ahead and set that, okay? And all I would have to do to change an embroidery design to a patch is go here to the easy applique button. And 
it's going to add that satin stitch border around the outside. Now, how it does it, I have lots of choices. So this first one it looks kind of like an amoeba will conform to the shape of the design. So it'll be kind of irregular right around here. If I want a round patch, a square, a diamond, a triangle. So whatever kind of shape that you want. I kind of think this, this one, it would be good here. Then you can also adjust how tight, how much fabric would be between the stitching here and the outside of your patch. So let's pop this out a little bit here. We'll say set. And you can see how it's added. If you like it, you're good. You hit okay. If you want to go back and reconsider, maybe I want to make it a little bit of, uh, more space around there, I can do that. And just keep playing with that until you're happy with the result, all right? So really, really easy to make things into patches um, on the machine, so don't ever worry about doing that. Now, the other function that's on here, you know, if you were doing patches, you probably don't wanna have to hoop for one patch at a time, right? You wanna do a whole hoop full of patches at the same time, so you can come in here to the border function. And this is basically a really quick copy and paste, if you would. So here I'm adding horizontally. So we'll go ahead and add one more over here. Nope, and it tells me I can't add one more. So I can fit three here. And let's see if we can fit another row here. Yep, so I can get six patches and a hoop. I can center the whole group together just like that. So that was easy. Hit OK, hit Edit End. And then if I wanted to color sort, right, so it does all the oranges and all the yellows, I would simply push the color sort button here. And that would allow me to do six patches really, really quickly with a machine with that color sort feature. All right. All right. Let's see. What else can we talk about? So many things. Let's talk about, you know, some of you may have, and I'm going to use one of these as a proxy for an applique design. Okay. So let's say I have a circle that's in a run stitch, but it's actually um, an applique design, right? And I have a scan and cut too, but my design didn't come with a cut file for my applique and I hate fussy cutting in the hoop, right? And I'm sure that's true for some of you as well. You can actually add or create a cut file for yourself right here on the embroidery machine. So what you do is you're gonna come into the thread colors and you'd have more options here, but you will figure out the stitch sequence that is the placement line because the placement line is typically wider than the tack down. And then you will make sure you run the thread palette called embroidery. And then you will toggle down to the bottom and you'll see you have three special characters, scissors. So this is placement line, tack down line and finish line. So I'll simply assign that thread color to the placement line. Hit OK. And then I can send this the whole embroidery design to my scan and cut wirelessly or put it on a USB and carry it over. And even though it's an embroidery file, the scan and cut will be able to read this thread color and know that that's the cut line. And so you can pre-cut your applique fabric on the scan and cut without having to worry about any, any other things in it. So that's a really nice and handy feature for appliques. All right. Now, the one thing that we haven't really talked about, so let's do the no-so feature because it's really fun. So let's come in here. I'll pick one of these decorative fonts. How about this guy? We'll do, we'll do an R for Ruthie, okay? Now, let's say for whatever reason, I didn't like the red components of this, right? I could come in here and let's say I don't want any of the red sequences to stitch for whatever reason, I simply toggle onto the red and then here's my no so. And notice how it now has eliminated all the red elements in the design and it updates the image on the screen. So it, this is much nicer. If I had to make that choice and not see it before I stitch it, I might be a little bit nervous, but it automatically updates it here. I might come in here and decide I don't wanna do the blue either. And then if you get in here and you're like, oh, I made a bad decision, you can just come back here and hit it again and it brings it right back, okay? So that's, that's really what I would call design editing on the fly. I really like that feature. So Sarah, I'm guessing we might have some questions by now, do we? Um, let me check. So someone asked if we'll be able to watch this later. You will be able to watch this later. We'll have a link sent out. Um, it'll probably be posted on YouTube or something like that. So we will send that out an email. Um, let me see if there's any more. Miss Barbara said she did, hadn't 
she had never heard of the um, magnetic sashing frame before, but we don't have any questions besides that. Oh man, you guys have the best customers. They already know all the good stuff, right? Does anybody <laughs> have any other questions? Maybe they don't pertain to the magnetic sashing frame. Yeah, things on the machine. Any questions about some of the things I just showed you? How many of y'all have used that color sort? Man, does it save some time. Yeah, it's amazing. Especially with freestanding lace. That's what I like to use it with. Yeah, I like the border function a lot too. I mean, if you're going to copy and paste, it's so much faster than, you know, doing the whole thing a hundred times. All righty. Well, should we keep going then? I <laughs> guess I am. Do you want to give them a bathroom break or? Yeah, you guys want to take a little five minute uh, intermission and then we'll come back. I drank like a gallon of coffee before we started. So I'm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to pause the recording. Um, oh. All right, we are good to go. All right, let's go then. Um, you guys might, if you don't already have the PR playbook, I can't say enough wonderful things about it. Um, I think many of you have heard me say it's like taking the teacher home in the box with you, but these videos literally have step-by-step -step instructions for you. They walk you through most, if not all the main functions on the machine. There's extra videos in here and you make a bunch of projects as you go through. So you're learning, but you're making stuff which makes it fun. And if you're like me, once I do it, I can remember it, but like reading about it or thinking about it, I may or may not remember that. So the PR playbooks are a really nice um, asset for you as well. And let's let's look at a few samples and some things from the 10 needle now. We'll just kind of break it up a little bit. So speaking of the playbooks, this is one of the designs that you make. It's a little bit hard to see. I've got black stipple on the black fabric here, but it's literally, it's, a, it's an in the hoop design that you make completely on the machine. You just fold the backing pieces in half and layer them in and lay it on top and stitch it together. So really quick and easy and fun and certainly, certainly techniques and stuff that you can use for lots of other projects. So those are fun. You know, here's a few patches that I put together. Um, and again, it doesn't have to be a design. It can be a name and then you can create the stamp or the outline around it. So lots of different ways to make patches. Um, for those of you who are interested in doing patches, if you don't have experience or haven't done it in the past, you don't have a, a regular stabilizer in the hoop. You have a really heavy duty water soluble stabilizer that's specifically made for patches. Ruth, Ruthie's um, store certainly sells patch kits. You put that in, you lay your fabric on top, right? Once your patch is finished, it basically punches out of that water soluble like a sticker. And then you'll turn it uh, upside down and you'll put an iron on fusible on the back that's permanent and then basically apply it to whatever item you wanna put the patch on. So. Um, what's cool about patches is, you know, if you're going to an event, you can make a bunch of patches in advance. You don't have to sew anything while you're there. You also, if you're worried about messing something up, you're not, like you're putting it on a jacket or you're putting it on a tote bag, not really stitching on the item, right? So you can make the patch, you know, the patch is perfect and then you can apply it later. So patches are really popular. Um, they're also really profitable. You, you'd be shocked. Go on Etsy and look, look what people are selling patches for. I think you'd be really surprised. Now, more um, text editing things on the machine. You do have some really fancy um, fonts on here, split applique fonts, and then you can add your name in here for a tote bag. That's kind of fun. Here's another decorative font, right? And we've all seen the love. You just make the O a little bit of crooked, but really, really cute and, and beautiful um, decorative alphabets that are great for lots and lots of different projects. And then quilting, you know, I've got a couple examples here of quilting projects. So let's see, they're a little big for the table here, but this one's really pretty. So this is basically a 14 by 14 inch block. So a quarter, each one of these corners, if you would, is a design that's on the machine, simply been repeated four times to make that 14 inch block. You know, we talked about the quilt embroidery with the borders earlier. You might be able to see it a little bit better on the back because I've got white thread on the back but literally you just put in the dimensions of your quilt and it matches everything up for you and it's perfect every time. So quilting is super easy and super fun with these machines. It takes really all the, the stress and the guesswork out. Here's another example. This one was um, one of Ruth's wonderful flower panels. Um, and I this was a 
design set that I bought from someone else and just using the camera to land each one of those designs perfectly within a pedal. And it just, it really just couldn't be any easier. So really, really a fun machine to use. Sarah, I know the 10 needle has got to be one of your favorites, isn't it? Yes, I have one at home. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. So let's go ahead. We'll keep going here. We've got a few more things we're going to cover for today. So let's get to that. Give me one second here. All right. So next up, again, for those of you who maybe you have a big craft fair coming up, maybe you're, you know, you got a lot of things you need to make for family or ladies in the quilt guild or whatever. Um, supply resources. There are a lot of organizations out there that have great information available to you. I've listed some here, right? The Decorated Apparel Expo, Impressions Expo is great. Um, the Embroidery Mart in Atlanta. Impressions is one of my favorites. The Impressions, and there's another group called Graphics Expo. And basically go online and get on their mailing list and subscribe to their newsletter. Um, they send you out a, a printed magazine. I think it's every month. And then you get newsletters every week and they cover the gamut from embroidery to the digital cutters like the scan and cut, you know, to screen printing, basically the entire uh, apparel decora decorating marketplace. But they'll have, you know, great vendors to buy blanks from where to get, you know, supplies that you might need. Hey, by the way, have you heard about this cool new hoop that makes your life easier? Just all kinds of great information in there. Plus, they have pictures, lots of pictures of finished projects so you can kind of see what's trending and what's, you know, what's uh, popular at the time. And again, you know, go online, look for Facebook groups, other people with a similar interest to you. Networking, I can't say enough about it. And, you know, some people are, are reluctant to share. Like there's a machine embroidery club in my neighborhood. There's 100 ladies or so in it. And uh, a new person joined recently who who basically has a business and she like she wasn't willing to tell people where she got her blanks. Right. She thinks it's a trade secret. And I suppose I get it. But if you look online, the, the just apparel decoration. Right. So embroidery and heat transfer vinyl with your scan and cut and all that. That's a multi billion dollar industry in the U.S. alone. Right. Any kind of business opportunity that is that big has room for all of us in it. Right. So I, I just think. Sharing is caring. We all have to go through the same learning process. I just encourage people to be open and sharing with that kind of thing. All right, so now we got some more cool accessories. So let's see what else we have. Ah, the tubular frame table. All right, so this guy, you can use it on the 10 needle, the six needle and the persona. And basically its job is to support weight. So if you think about when you put a hoop on the machine, right? If you had something really heavy in that hoop, the the weight would be dragging the front of the hoop down right so that means the machine would be stitching at an angle which you wouldn't get good registration marks and so you know on the 10 needle the wide extension table comes with the machine right and so if it's flat like a quilt easy peasy put on the wide extension table and you're off to the races but if it's narrow what if i'm doing a golf bag right i can't i can't use the wide extension table because it won't fit in there well that's what the tubular frame table is for it fits right over the free arm for the machine Right. And it's and it basically can get inside narrow um, objects and folds flat to store. It's really easy to put on and off. Here's a picture of it. This is the Carhartt jacket. So if you've not done one, they're really, really heavy. And we're doing a sleeve embroidery and the tubular frame table is actually inside of the sleeve. Um, and it's managing all the weight for that heavy jacket. So you have really good stitch outs and you don't have to worry about registration marks. So. If you don't have one, I, I would absolutely have the tubular frame table on my must-have accessory list. You'll be surprised the number of times that you use it, and it's really easy to use, too, so it's a good one to have. And then one of my other favorites are the flash magnetic frames, and I know several of you have these, but um, they, they were designed for quick and easy hooping, right? So it's a, a quick magnet system that's on here. Um, it's very quick and easy to hoop something. If you're going to do like 25 tote bags, literally takes about 30 seconds to take one off and put the next one in. Um, they do come in two sizes, a four by four and a five by seven. Uh, really, really handy. And Sarah, how do you like these flash magnetic frames? <laughs> hey, sorry, Mimi just got here. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? They're good. Yeah, I love it. You're doing fantastic. I mean, I've watched some. I love it. Anyone that happens gets to see this, it's mm -hmm. like, wow. 
these flash <laughs> magnetic frames i love them we have them in the five by seven and the four by four um great at holding your projects in and we have like this big laundry bag thank you um we have this big laundry bag around here somewhere and you can get all the way to the bottom of that because you have that extra space you too you thank too you. Um, you have all that extra space where you can stuff the rest of that in. And you're going to love, I can even just clip them little things and they come off. They're not hard. They don't hurt your hand and just pop them right back on there. And you do one shirt after another, one bag after another, and you can take care of it. And you want both of them. You get the little one part and then you get the five by seven and then you get the four by four and you can run both on that one frame. But I'm guess what? If you decide you want a 10 needle in the next two weeks, I'm going to throw you in that five by seven hoop. Can you stand it? Wow. Yeah, that's, I love it. And they're about a thousand bucks. Can you stand that? That's amazing. Yeah, that's really nice. This is the best time ever to buy a 10 needle at Reethy's. I've never seen a sale like we're doing right now, but we always do awesome deals, but this is the best ever. And we're doing special financing. We train you one-on-one -on -one and before you know it, Tina will be back here doing another class live in Reethy's because she's flat short done some of the best and a classes. bunch of goodies and a bunch of goodies. You have never say nobody give goodies like Reethy does. They're like, they don't have room to just get behind their wheel and drive home. They have so much stuff. Willie D, my husband used a good pack a car like you had never seen them. People just had room to get in and drive home. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> you'll love coming. It's worth the trip. A lady come from Maryland. She flew down here. We trained her two days and she stayed for classes two days had a ball and then went back home and I mean she loved it I mean there's so many people come here from everywhere you might think it's a long ways but it's worth it all the training all this what we give you how we help you we're here after the sale we've been doing this about 40 years top sales from day one since February 17th of 1987 and about 56 dollars in eyes in business can you stand it Small beginning, large endings, out in the middle of nowhere on a farm. Now we've got cows and everything. So you should see Sarah chasing cows. Yesterday we had a whole bunch get out. And I said, they're all over the yard, y'all. And you should have seen them get them right back in the pen. It was so cool. Thank God they got them in the pen. But anyhow, oh. I didn't mean to take up y'all's time. Hope you're having a good time watching Tina. I am so excited that we have this class for y'all. We have to do several more like this with Tina where you can watch it over and over and over because... I don't know if you have a favorite movie and you watch it maybe five or 10 times. And every time you watch it, you notice something different. So every time you watch this and Tina, don't worry if you watch it 25 times, that's fine too. Cause there might be something you'll, Woo, that's you just what you needed. You'll pick up so much because she knows her stuff. She is excellent. Her samples, her what she does. She is top. You will absolutely love this video to watch it over and over and we'll be having her doing more for us too thank you thank you thank you Tina, and next time this. we're streaming it over youtube and facebook yeah so it'll make it a little bit easier on everybody and everybody can watch this it. is our first go so we're really excited today to get jump in and get our feet wet next time we can swim in deep water y'all <laughs> and have a you won't be able to stand it but this one's been super good i'm so happy with this um class i hope y'all are loving it i hope it blesses your socks off can you stand it? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ruth. Now I know. Now I know I'm with Ruthie because I heard that. Can you stand it? <laughs> yeah, I love it. This is so exciting. Oh, that's funny. All right. So next up, I'm going to walk. You know, I've talked about the positioning system on the six needle, but you haven't seen it yet. So I made a video so you can see the whole process. And in this video, I'm using the flash frames with a polo shirt. So let's let's look at this guy real quick. You get to see all kinds of stuff in one. So give me a second here and we'll find this guy. All righty. So here's the flash frame and it's we're on the six needle machine. So you see you just pop those magnets off really, really quickly. And then the that part opens up kind of like a mouth. And I'm hooping the shirt upside down, just so you know. And I've drawn a, li a line on it. Um, where I want the design so that you can see I want it centered over the pocket and I want it to be about a quarter inch above the pocket because, you know, if you sew the pocket shut, it's not a pocket anymore. So then you just place the magnets in here. So basically on the positioning, we're going to come in and I'm going to do a brother shirt here. So we'll set the design and then I don't really have any other changes to make for it. So we'll, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm rotating it because I did hoop it upside down here. So that's easy. So now 
Uh, we'll go to edit end. I think I'm all done editing here. And now we're just going to position. So I hooped it crooked, right? So I don't have a camera on this machine. So I'm going to be using that crosshair positioning laser. So that's the icon right here. Now you have nine different ways, but I want it centered over that pocket. And remember, the pocket is above me. So I'm picking center top as my as my alignment point. And then I drew that horizontal line. So either right or left is equally good. So I picked right. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm using the move keys on the machine on the right, and you'll see the crosshair laser. And look how big that is, move it on the shirt. And what I want is that center of the laser to be right on that center of the crosshair that I drew on the shirt, right? And you've got the, the speed button. So one arrow below is slow and three is really quick. So I got that. Now this time I want the center of the crosshair laser to be on that line off to the right hand side, right? And that's how I'm adjusting for rotation. That looks really good. So I'll set and now I'll see how it's moved the design. So I hooped it off center and I hooped it crooked and that machine makes it stitch perfect every time. So really, really quick and easy to use. Um, if you haven't used it before, it's it's super quick and easy. I think you guys are, would really love it, all right? So wasn't that fun? I mean, that laser, it, you know, it's so easy and it's so quick. And so again, what I love about these PR machines is you don't have to be a perfect hooper, right? You can hoop at all kinds of off center and a little bit crooked. And yet with a couple of easy tools, you get it perfect every single time. So really, really fun and easy to use. Now, another accessory that I love um, is the sleeve frame. And so this guy has a three by eight inch embroidery field and it's got the wing design. So you use it with the arms that are on your machine. And it's really nice to get into things like onesies or Christmas stockings, the leg of a pair of jeans, all that kind of stuff. Um, it works with the 1055, the 1050 and the six needle. Um, so it's a really nice hoop to have. And Ruth, I think you told me earlier today, you have some of these at the store, right? I have them. We had to wait for months to get them in and I got three brand new ones in the box. And uh -huh. today they're 147. If you want one, we can ship it right to you. But I love, love, love how it went down that pants leg and how you can do the sleeves of arms. I mean, when they showed that in a class, we saw, we had to order a boatload of them. Yeah. Super easy. All right. Another one of my favorites is the regular the 185. So you're getting a little discount at 174 today. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's a nice price. That includes shipping. Can you stand it? Cool. All right. So another favorite is the jumbo frame. Um, this one works on the 10 needles, the 1055, the 1050, and the 1000E. It's got a 14 by 14 inch embroidery field, which is really nice and big. Now, the way it works is you stitch out the first half, and then you basically... Um, rotate the hoop around and put the hoop in and it stitches out the second half, but it uses those snowman stickers so that it's perfectly aligned every single time. So it's really fun. So we're going to go back and look at some samples and some things for a few minutes here. So let, let me do a quick camera change. So earlier when we were on the 10 needle and we talked about the um, design center and I said, oops, of course I did it upside down. I said you can scan in uh, clip art or coloring book design. So here's a coloring book design that I had. I basically put it on the scanning mat, right, with the arrows, um, scanned it into the machine, and then assigned stitches to it. And then here it is stitched out. So really quick and easy. And I started coloring because, you know, it was begging for some color. But really easy to take things like grandchildren's artwork or people's signatures and that kind of thing and easily convert it into stitches. So don't forget that feature. Um, it's really popular. Um, I've done res old family recipes, you know, and, and grandmother's handwriting and that kind of stuff, digitizing them for holiday placemats and gifts. People love that kind of thing. And then the sleeve hoop, let's bring this over here. If only I had more space, the things I could show you. But here is a pair of jeans, right? You can see the embroidery on the leg here. Um, that might be really hard to do. Those aren't very wide legs with most of our hoops, but that sleeve hoop fits right up inside of the leg of the jeans and allows you to do really cool um, embroidery without taking out seams and having to restitch them. And just while we're on here, we talked a little bit about patches. So this embroidery is actually up in the pocket area of the jeans, right? And I didn't want to sew the pocket shut. 
So I actually stitched all these flowers out as patches and then ironed them onto the jeans in this area. So you kind of look at what your challenges are for your project and then, you know, figure out what the best process is. But just really quickly, if you haven't used the sleeve frame to do something like jeans, right, the, um, this part of the hoop, whoops, this part of the hoop slides up inside of the jean leg. You get it positioned the way that you like it. And then basically you just pop this part down and put the hoop on the machine and then you're ready to stitch. It's also great for those of you with, you know, little children, grandchildren and all to stitch for. It's a great hoop for doing onesies as well. So lots and lots of different things. I did a bunch of Christmas stockings this year using this hoop. So it's real handy for lots of different projects. And then that jumbo 14 by 14 inch hoop. Oops. Let's look at a few of the things we can do here. So check this out. Look at that, isn't that pretty? That's a giant, I mean, I have big hands, right? But that is a big 14 by 14 embroidery. Again, the way this hoop works is it does this half here. You put a snowman sticker on, you turn the hoop around at the machine, it finds that snowman sticker, matches the two halves up perfectly and does the second half, but you can't even see where the two halves joined. But yet you get these really big embroideries. Here's another one. Um, this one is partially a design um, from a third party company. And then I used the design center to put this little fill around the edges because I didn't want to do all the leaves. But um, when you're thinking about this hoop, right, here's another one of those giant flower designs. This is a ruler bag. Let's see if we can see here. You turn over here. I also used this hoop before I started making this bag to make custom quilted fabric. So I have black fabric and batting in there and I did big pieces of quilted fabric that then I cut down to create the bags. You can see I got two different fills here on the bag. So that 14 by 14 inch hoop is really um, handy. And I think you guys would really enjoy using it. And Ruthie wants to say something. Hey, those bag, those 14 by 14 hoops sell for $450. Today, if you want to call 850-830-4815 and order one, you'll get it for $350. Just tell us you saw it on our, on this class today, our first ever with Tina. This, um, I'm loving this class on the 10 needle. So if you want one, it's awesome what she does with it. I love it. And you'll awesome. love having one if you don't. Yeah. I don't know about you guys, but uh, you know, I like think bigger is always better. So I like, I like having some big hoops here. All right. So next, um, I did want to spend a couple of minutes talking about the new Art Spirit app. Um, if you guys haven't used it yet, it's super easy. You um, download it from the Google Play Store or the Apple Store. Um, there's a registration process that you go through with your scan and cut and your embroidery machine. And then you can access all this free content, right? So um, here's, you know, on the left-hand side, that's what that's a page out of one of the magazines of designs. On the right-hand side was a particular project. And I'll show you, I actually stitched this out. But first, I let me see if you can see my phone on the screen. Hold on one second. And I'll switch back over. All right, so let's go here. I don't know if you can see my phone well here. So I've launched the Art Spirit app. Let's see if I hold this up, maybe you can better. Um, you can see here I have embroidery designs on the left and cutting designs on the right. And so let's say I wanna make an embroidery project inside of embroidery designs. These are all free embroidery designs that are available to you. And they're in categories, so these are seasons, and here you can see animals and flowers and plants and all that kind of stuff. So you can kind of scroll through. You have similar content on the cutting side, right? If I go to cutting designs, again, these are free designs that you can send wirelessly to your scan and cut to make whatever projects you want. So lots of different kinds of things that are on here. Um, the magazine, you can see they come out about every week. So I think I went into issue number seven here. And so it looks like a lot of fun little bags and sewing things. So you can kind of scroll through the magazine if you want to put little hard embroideries on a sweatshirt sleeve or you want to put some um, vinyl on a pencil case. But I like this little sewing picture here. So we click on the project that we like. 
inside of here, you'll see a picture of the finished project. If I press this arrow here, I can watch a, a three minute video of somebody making the project, which is cool because then you can kind of run through it before you do it. And then here underneath, if you scroll down, you can see all the supplies that you need and then step-by-step -step directions on how to do it. So really, if you think about it, it's, it's, I think of it as an educational resource, right? Not only do you get all these cool free designs, but you also get these professionally done videos where people are teaching you how to make things and how to use different things on your machine. And again, the way Artspira works is these, machine, these designs go to your machine wirelessly. So earlier today, I, sent, I clicked here and I sent that design wirelessly to my 10 needle and I resized it a little bit, but look how cute that is. And I mean, again, completely free. I didn't have to figure anything out. It was all figured out for me. All I had to do was get my fabric, put it in my five by seven flash magnetic frame and stitch it out in a few minutes. And so I love this, this app. I think there's so much good information and content in here. And again, especially if you're brand new to embroidery or brand new to your scan and cut, those videos watching somebody, they show you what button to push. They walk you step-by-step step through these projects. It's a really good educational um, tool for you. So if you haven't tried it yet, I really recommend it. Has anybody that's on with us today done any, made any projects yet with the Arts Bureau? Sarah, have you made anything yet from Arts Bureau? I have not. I've linked them together. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I, I constantly browse through it and there's some really cute designs for embroidery files and SVG files. Yeah, there really are some adorable um, files in here. Again, so for those of you who are like me, you might, I might call myself a design hoarder. Lots of, lots of additional free designs, but again, all the information on how to make the projects is terrific. All right, so a couple more things about business for those of you who are looking to generate some income with your machine. Of course, you know, it's awesome about that is you can let your little children or grandchildren or even you draw things and send mm -hmm. it over there and it'll make you, a, you can stitch it out. That's true. You can actually do your own drawing in there or load a backdrop and trace over it and create your own designs without embroidery software or anything else. So it, it is really a fun um, app. I think you guys will love it if you when you start using it. And it even works on the little five by seven sewing machine. I did the drawing part on the five by seven sewing machine at B2B. I forgot about that, but I have not done it um, in store. That's on my to-do list though. Yeah, I've been doing some of the projects that are on Artspira. So it's it's been really fun. And, and you know, I even me, even though I've been doing this for a while, I look at other people's videos and I'm like, oh, so that's how they do that. So it's kind of fun. All right, a couple more things for those of you who are interested in the business. Um, do be aware of copyright infringement, right? So anything, you know, Disney or Marvel or Star Wars or even things you might not think about like Starbucks or Nike, right? Um, those companies have copyrighted those images. And even though someone may try and sell it to you on the internet, that doesn't necessarily mean that's legal. And so um, just be aware, you can't use someone else's copyrighted content without their permission. You know, you guys are close to the theme park in Florida. It is possible for you to get permission from Disney. You have to pay a fee and, you know, then they'll give you a license to produce up to X number of items with them. So if that's something that you need for your business, make sure you contact whoever the copyright holder is. There's a URL here that you can go to to check out um, copyright issues if you have some questions. But, you know, it, it, keep it simple. If you recognize the brand name or Disney or something, you know, you don't have permission to use it, even though somebody tried to sell it to you in an online design store. Pricing, I get a ton of uh, questions from people on setting a price, right? It's more of an art than a science, but some of the things you guys are gonna wanna think about when you're pricing things is, you know, how difficult is it, right? Some things that we stitch are super easy, you're in and out in no time, and other things take a lot of extra time. They might be hard to hoop or they might need a lot of experimentation for the stabilizer recipe or something else. So you want, if it is gonna take you a lot more time, you wanna factor that into the way that you price it. You know, the thing, is it a reasonable price for your, for your area, right? We, those of us who do this, you know, as a business, there's basically two different pricing methodologies you can use. One is cost-based, right? It cost me $5 between the use of my machine and thread and stabilizer and the blank to make it. 
And so as long as I sell it for more than $5, the extra is profit, right? That's one way. The other one is market-based pricing, right? Let's say somebody asks me to embroider on some really weird boat seat cover that takes me forever. Um, and by the time I figure out how much I want to charge, maybe I want to charge them $60, but other people in my area are doing it for 25, right? I'm not going to sell any for $60. I still have to be aware of market-based pricing. So you kind of, you kind of test the waters in both directions, you know, um, go on Etsy, look what people are charging for different things. When you're in local craft fairs, kind of, you'll get a feel for what kind of the going rate in your market is. And then for you, when you're deciding what kinds of things to make, right? You, if you can't compete with the prices in your area, that's probably not an item that you want to sell. You want to pick something else that offers you the opportunity to do it and still make money because, you know, as someone told me before, if it, you don't make a profit, it's not really a business. Um, so think about that again, you know, you're going to be hungrier in the beginning. So you might agree to use the customer, you know, blank or do it for a, a cost where you barely make any money just to kind of get your name out there and to get the experience. So the, some of this is trial and error. And at the bottom of this um, slide, you see a, a website address that's a really good article on all kinds of different pricing considerations and embroidery. If you haven't read it yet, I would recommend it. It's really well done. You know, the most common pricing model that's been out there forever is time plus materials as your selling price, right? So typically people in embroidery do a certain dollar amount per thousand stitches, and it depends on your where you live, but it can range from a dollar to four dollars per thousand stitches, right? The challenge with that, if that was the only thing that you factored in, is that methodology kind of falls apart at both ends of the spectrum, right? So let's say I'm doing three letter monograms on men's shirt cuffs, right? So you're talking, there's probably not a thousand stitches in the three letter monogram. How many of those am I going to be willing to do for a dollar? Not very many, right? So you got that. So don't be married to that as the only way you determine pricing. And at the other end of the spectrum, let's say somebody wants me to stitch on a motorcycle jacket, a design that has 140,000 stitches on it, right? They're probably not going to be willing to pay me you know, 600 bucks for doing that, right? So you kind of have to, it's a good sort of baseline thing to think about and then you kind of wiggle it around from there. Materials, again, it's gonna be the wholesale price of your blank, right? So if, if my cap cost me $2, then I'm gonna multiply that by two and sell it for four. Any other supplies? Do we have a question? Okay. Any other supplies that you're using, thread, stabilizer, that kind of stuff, you figure out what your cost is, multiply that by two. And so again, you know, make sure you're covering all your cost of that. For most of you, you're probably not going to want to take on custom digitizing. There's a lot, a long learning curve involved in that, right? It takes a lot of expertise. You can sub that out to a vendor and have it done much more quickly and much more economically. And then if you grow and you become great at that over time, you can pull it back in. But I would recommend for most of you just outsource your digitizing um, and then a setup fee, right? Like I didn't used to charge that, um, but I started, I have, I, it's typically eight bucks for me to put something in a hoop at this point, And then I add additional uh, money on top of that based on difficulty, number of stitches and other materials, because again, you had, you had to have the hoop, you had to learn how to use it. You had to take the time to do it, all those other things. So don't be afraid of, of doing the setup fees. And then the, the other thing I'm going to talk to you guys about is an order form. Um, there's lots of places you can get really nice order forms. You know, Canva is a great resource for that if you haven't used it yet. But what's good about an order form is that it clarifies kind of the expectations between you and the customer, right? Um, if it's team shirts, right, and you might assume that they spell a name a certain way and they actually don't, right, as long as you have the names written out on your order form, if you stitch them out the way they're done and the team mom gave you the wrong spelling, right, that's on them, that's not on you, you can certainly remake that shirt, but they'll have to pay for it, that kind of thing, right, include your price quote, um, and, you know, I would recommend that you get half your money up front whenever possible, because not everybody picks up their order and you don't want to be sitting there with, you know, a bunch of shirts and all that expense and not get paid for it. So um, those are some suggestions I would have for you. But I mean, don't don't make this really difficult. It's really pretty straightforward um, and it's nothing that needs to be awkward or overwhelming. 
All right. A couple of other things to think about for your business, right? When you got, if you have a business, you, when you're out in the world, right, you and your family are living billboards for your business. So they should be rocking some embroidered shirts, some embroidered caps, purses, backpacks, whatever it is you're planning on selling. It's probably good for them to have those. Um, here's an, This is a really simple but uh, important way to increase your um, business from a customer. Maybe they order shirts from you, right? And you did a great job on the shirts, but you just started doing caps. So when you deliver their next shirt order, give, have, put their logo on a cap and include it as a gift. Now they know that you're their vendor for shirts and caps, right? And go ahead and get yourself a business card. Make it easy for people to find you. Make sure they know your web address and they know your telephone number and that kind of stuff. Um, but those are the kind of easy, basic things. Other things you might want to think about is, you know, adding related services. So Scan and Cut is a great companion for an embroidery machine. Um, again, we talked about applique earlier, pre-cutting your fabric pieces, but also you can now put heat transfer vinyl on things, right? So the Scan and Cut is a really um, nice additional service that you can offer in your business. There's two models out right now, the 325 and the 330D. The 330D has Disney on it, um, but they're both really wonderful machines, super quiet, um, really, really quick. If you don't even know what a scan and cut machine is, right, it's an electronic cutting machine. Um, what's unique about Brothers Scan and Cut is there's a high resolution scanner on it. They have the auto blade technology, so you never have to try and figure out, you know, how, what the pressure and the speed should be for cutting. Um, they're really awesome machines. You know, you can cut paper, cardstock, fabric, heat transfer, vinyl, balsa wood, kind of whatever you want to cut, you can do up to about three millimeters in thickness. And it's quick and it's easy and it's accurate. So um, I really love my scan and cut. I use it all the time. And I know Ruth, Ruth and Sarah are big fans of the scan and cut as well. Yes, I love it. There's so much more you can do. Um, I've... Mimi said, we're going to have to get you to do a scan and cut class soon on the Zoom. All right. No problem. All right. So I thought I have a few more samples. Uh, if anyone has any questions, it's a great time for questions. We got a few more minutes. So I thought I'd, I'd just share a few more samples with folks. Do we have any questions? All right, Sarah, you've got the smartest customers in the country. They just know it all already. <laughs> uh, let me look. Larry said he used our spirit today with the stamp in my design center to create fills. Nice. Miss Judy has not downloaded it yet. Um, does anybody have any questions? If you're interested in any of the products she's, she's shown or anything like that, you can um, give Ruthie a call. Her number is 850-830-4815. And the shop is 850-403-7332. As Judy said, when are you coming back to Ruthie's? Miss Tina's coming soon. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we, we need to finalize everything, but she's coming back soon. We should have those dates posted. Miss Pam said, wonderful class. You guys are too sweet. All righty. So here's just a couple other things. You know, I showed you the, the brother polo shirt. Um, all the people, when you go to see the doctor, right? Like I got asked by my dentist if I could do their scrubs and that kind of stuff. So yeah, absolutely. It's super easy. You saw how easy it is to position. Here's another way that you can handle a pocket. These little pocket topper designs are adorable, aren't they? That little dinosaur is actually on the six needle machine. It's super duper cute. I know my favorite part is his little teeth. <laughs> um, you know, if you have a baker or a restaurant business, again, little aprons are another great idea. Super easy to do. Again, this is another design that's on the PR680W. Little kid stuff is really popular too. Um, this is a little dream weaver on a, on a little um, jean jacket. One of the things to think about in terms of market opportunity though, there's a whole lot more kind of embroidered or custom clothing 
available for girls than there are for boys. And so you might want to target, you know, little tractors or something that you think would be um, really popular for little boys. That's another good one. And then again, when you're thinking about your business, I'm going to walk you through, like think about collections, right? So if you get in with a school and their sports teams, right? So here, this might be an example of a collection that you could offer. So here's an embroidered baseball cap, you know, with their mascot on it. And here's the sweatshirt for mom and dad that they can wear to the games that has the same design that's, again, using that resize with stitch recalculation. And then for the kids, you can do their little backpacks that they put their shoes in when they're going to the game. Uh, team moms, you can do the tote bag for them. I mean, you're seeing how all these things kind of come together. Um, here's the little sports dresses, you know, for the girls in high school, cheerleaders and that kind of stuff. That would be nice. You can even include little laptop cases and things, right? So once you get the design and it's digitized, just kind of look around and see all the kinds of things that they're buying, right? And all of those are business opportunities for you. So don't be afraid you know, to try new things and put collections and that kind of stuff together. Cause it's, it's not, it's not really that hard. All right. So Sarah, do we have any, any late breaking questions for us? Um, Miss Judy said, enjoyed the zoom class too. Miss Linda, Linda said, I can't wait for my machine to come in. This class has been great. Thank you. Good. I'm glad. You have anything to add Mimi? No, just don't miss the classes because these are exciting because I love them because that we can back them up. Watch them again, Tina. This has been awesome. You have done a fantastic job. Thank you. I love it. You're so welcome. Thank you for, for having me, Ruth. Yeah, and I can't wait for you to do a scan and cut and the luminator <laughs> and all. we want lots of classes. All right. Well, and you know, I love so many people bought machines and they can't come here for classes or they might be up in the middle of the night and can't figure it out and they can watch your videos and figure it out. That's true. It. That's Thank true. You again, you did fantastic. This has been so much fun today. Well, good. Yeah. You guys ha happy stitching. I hope you all enjoy your machines. And again, you know, especially for those of you who are brand new, don't be afraid to touch it. Just get in there and start using it. You're not going to break it. Um, you'll be surprised how easy it is to do amazing work. And, you know, whether it's just for your own amusement or you're interested in starting a business, you, you have the tools that you need to be successful. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Um, does anybody have any questions before we sign off? Be sure and tell all your friends to watch us if they missed it and have a 10 needle or a six needle or they're thinking of getting one. It might be the turning point because you couldn't pick a better time with the big spring sale coming up that we have on 10 needles right now. We're doing it now. And um, it's it's awesome. The price point and what you get is, is magnificent. I'm really excited about it. Can you stand it? Have an awesome spring sale. Yep. It's just, and there's a lot of other things that's coming with the sale. Thank you again. All right, so I don't think we have any more questions. Thank you all so much for coming. Um, it's been great. I've enjoyed this class so much. Thank you, Miss Tina. Yeah. You did awesome. Um, even with the tech um, technical difficulties loop. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I hope you all all have a blessed night and we will see you in the next one. All right. Bye, Sarah. Bye, Ruth. Uh, thank you again. We loved it. Take care.